வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் கோர்ஸ் ஆன் கிளாசிக்ஸ் இன் நியூர் சயின்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் தி டிஸ்கவரி ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் டிஎன்ஏ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் ஹவு ரெப்ளிகேஷன் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் பட் நாட் இன் த அடல்ட் ஹியூமன் பிரெயின் தி டைனமிக் ஜீன்ஸ் அண்ட் குரோமோசோம்ஸ் ஹியூமன் ஜீன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு ஃப்ரம் ஃபிசிக்ஸ் வி மூவ் டு மலிகுலர் பயாலஜி to neuroscience or brain on the one hand we had a whole army of scientists attempting to break the code or how dna makes proteins or how dna plays a crucial part in protein synthesis on the other hand there was continued interest in how dna replicates itself because that's also crucial of course from the watson crick model there is an understanding that uh, dna replicates itself using the regular ways in which uh, this happens that is uh, mitosis and meiosis that is cell division and cell reproduction but exactly how that was not yet found it was also found that uh, this uh, bacteria e coli was uh, catalyzing the synthesis of uh, dna led to this uh, dna polymerase some organs like for example the liver were capable of regenerating from a small amount of tissue they will practically regenerate their entire tissue this was possible for the liver but not for some other parts of the body this was possible for liver this was possible for skin for example so after an injury you see that there is healing that happens although a scar appears still there is healing so there is regeneration of this tissue but somehow this is not happening in the adult brain cells why that question continues to till date we still are studying why is replication turned off for adult brain cells as people were discussing these two things one on how dna can play an important role in synthesis of proteins and another on how dna itself replicates within various parts of the body but not in the adult brain there are also continued interest in the tradition of mendel remember how mendel studied plants and uh, suggested some interesting insights on the nature of heredity in that line barbara mcclintock studied indian corn or maize and she suggested there are some moving controlling elements that she called as mobile controlling elements she later came to be called as mobile genes these reflected mutations possibly due to genes that move about or remote genes and uh, that remotely related genes could move about within the chromosome right so this first suggested some idea that uh, genes can move about so there is this dynamic nature of uh, genome but only much later the importance and uh, confirmation of this theory would come about it would take about 2 3 decades for this to come about how many chromosomes are there was another question of interest so the word karyotype referred to the specific arrangement of chromosomes fruit fly as the model system has only four chromosomes which makes it specifically very easy it's an easy model system to study in humans there were it was suggested first there were 23 pairs called autosomes and an additional two x chromosomes in females and uh, or an x and y chromosome in males was known to be present it was suggested at that time so there were 23 plus 
was suggested. Finally, in 1956, it was confirmed that the humans had 22 autosomes and plus one sex chromosome. Another idea that came about was that specific clinical disorders were somehow correlated with uh, abnormal arrangement or abnormal chromosomes. So, this idea that uh, some diseases are genetic originated from this thought process. Examples are uh, sickle cell anemia which uh, showed some defect in the gene for hemoglobin and uh, glycogen storage disease defect in the specific gene for the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate. Something that is more relevant to neuroscience was that in Down syndrome there was trisomy of the 21st autosome. The, or rather instead of a pair of instead of a pair you have three chromosomes in the 21st autosome when that happens this led to the disease called down syndrome so here you see that uh, in a healthy child the chromosome 21 has a pair of autosomes, but uh, in the child with uh, Down syndrome, there are three instead of a pair of autosomes, you are having three, which is trisomy 21, leading to Down syndrome. That is specific and seen in this child with Down syndrome. Many of these were also uh, associated with uh, specific defects in the brain or uh, specific changes in the dendritic spine or uh, cerebral cortex. We will discuss all this in later videos. The great advances in biology in the 1950s finally put to rest that biology can be simply explained by classical physics. This started perhaps with the discovery of the structure of DNA. In 1953, the structure of DNA was described. Then uh, in the 1960s, you had uh, the genetic code that was uh, discussed in the 1970s recombinant DNA and methods to quickly sequence DNAs or rapid DNA sequencing were discussed or described and in the 1980s there was the PCR the polymerase chain reaction that was discussed in 2000 we actually had the sequencing of the entire human genome this line of work finally confirmed that uh, biology is not an extension of physics that the nature of heredity was from biology was a biological phenomenon whose mechanisms were also biological. The distance between the discovery of the DNA to brain structure seems infinite, but this was covered in a period of about 50 years or little bit more this way that way. So, these are some of the references that we used and I recommend these uh, for you to read. So, with this we come to the end of this video. In this video, we discuss how replication happens, but not in the adult human brain. The nature of uh, genes as dynamic as discussed by McClintock and uh, how human genes itself work and uh, how we evolved from physics to molecular biology to brain that uh, the idea that heredity was explainable only using biological mechanisms. This is the biological phenomenon and not using classical physics. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention.